Hi, I'm Alex Jackson from Nyack Atlantic Public Affairs, and I'm here to do an interview for Naval Horizons with Dr. Dasha Leary. Dr. Leary, thanks for joining us today. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Alex, for having me today. Uh, I'm excited to tell you a little bit about uh, my career and about how I got uh, to my current position. Um, my name is Dasha Leary, and I'm a research biologist at the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, DC. I work as a scientist and I'm part of the mass spectrometry uh, laboratory at the Center for Biomolecular Science and Engineering. I study microorganisms and microbial communities. And uh, all of these are um, from the environments that are relevant to the US Navy operations. So a lot of our microbial communities and microbes are coming from the marine environment. Um, we would like we are studying them in the in their natural environment just to learn about how they adapt and what what they do uh, when they're in the nature. What other roles do you hold beyond your technical background? So over the years, I have been working with the microbial communities, uh, and uh, currently, I am a vice chair for the Tri Service Microbiome uh, Committee, and uh, uh, that is a uh, a work working group that focuses on um, aligning all the microbiome research between all DOD services. I also uh, work with uh, Biomate, which is a biomanufacturing institute, uh, and I am a co-chair for education and workforce development. Uh, we, in that role, I am working uh, with scientists and uh, academics and uh, industrial entities to introduce biotechnology and biomanufacturing to the community and to other uh, uh, personnel. That's really interesting. I appreciate all the work that you do. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got interested in this field? Yes, uh, so my academic journey has not been quite straightforward and it was slightly complicated and full of changes. I ended up learning about many disciplines during my graduate studies and I see um, that a great benefit in this. So I received my Masters of Science in Bioengineering and Biotechnology in Prague uh, in the Czech Republic. And during my final months, I actually um, uh, found a connection to a professor in North Dakota at the University of North Dakota. So I transferred from biotechnology and working with uh, microbial communities to full straight uh, physical chemistry. And after a year in the chemistry department, I started missing a little bit of the biology. So I ended up transferring to a biochemistry department in the same uh, university. However, within a few years with my new advisor, he decided to move his laboratory to Case Western University. And, and that was uh, where he joined the pharmacology department. So from biotechnology uh, to chemistry to biochemistry and then to, bi to pharmacology, um, I learned about all of these disciplines throughout my studies and uh, became very interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary scientist. And um, that's what led me to look for a slightly different type of career, non-traditional, uh, non-academic career at the time. And um, I joined uh, North, uh, Naval Research Laboratory as a postdoctoral fellow for, uh, as a, a National Research Council fellow and uh, then transferred to uh, a federal employee. Can you describe a little bit about um, why this work that you do is so relevant to the Naval community and to the Department of Defense overall? Yes, yeah, so um, a lot of my studies are focusing on analyzing microbial communities uh, and uh, microbes that live in the marine environment. So the US Navy actually operates in these environments. So we have to learn a little bit about the environment and what uh, our uh, personnel is exposed to when they, when they go perform their missions. Uh, we also um, have to use these environmental microbes or the big 
application that we are currently focusing on is biotechnology. And biotechnology is an emergent technology that uses microbial communities and microbes or biological uh, organisms to produce materials. So I think everybody will remember during the pandemic, uh, you can, everyone is aware of biotechnology because during the pandemic, biotechnology was used to very quickly produce vaccines against the virus. Um, the biotechnology that we are using though in uh, within um, NRL and within my laboratory is uh, to produce materials and to actually harness uh, the, um, the powers of uh, the microbes in the environment to work for us. And um, one of those uh, applications or one of a specific application that we are using currently in the, in the center is uh, the, uh, the tool is called synthetic biology. And uh, this tool involves uh, redesigning organisms for useful purposes by engineering them to have new abilities. So it utilizes the central dogma of biology. Uh, and this central dogma of biology states that genetic information is transferred from DNA to RNA and then to proteins in biological cells. So the scientists now can go and modify the DNA or the genes of the organisms to produce molecules and materials that are of interest to the US Navy. Furthermore, uh, in our laboratories, we use the marine organisms because we, that's the environment that we're operating in. So if you use these marine organisms, you can produce these materials right next to our ships or directly on our ships on your demand. And uh, my role is uh, to actually extract all of the biomolecules from these organisms and look at how they change once the engineers and microbiologists uh, change the genes of the organism. Because even though we're changing the genes of the organism to do something for us, we have to make sure that we are not changing the genes uh, to be detrimental to the organism itself or to, uh, to produce uh, toxins or be very, very uh, difficult for the, for the personnel. So uh, these molecules will, as, as we extract these molecules, these molecules will tell us the story about the microorganisms and how they adapt to the natural environments that they are working in. And we can study these and uh, actually take advantage of these adaptations and uh, use the molecules and materials to our advantage. Uh, one specific microorganism that we are, uh, we are uh, using in the laboratory is called Vibrio natrigens. And the superpower of this uh, microbial organism is it grows really fast. So it's capable of doubling within 10 minutes. And uh, we, this way we can produce the materials or if we modify this uh, bacteria to our advantage and to produce materials that we really uh, need, this way we can produce it very quickly and right where we need it. And avoiding any supply chain issues for our uh, personnel. Speaking of the, the personnel that you work with, how, important is this um, in terms of making sure that uh, they're able to do their jobs effectively and and making sure that the mission is being completed to the best of their abilities? The scientists in our uh, division modified this bacteria to produce a pigment that is called melanin. And melanin, uh, you may be aware of, is the uh, is present in this in our skin and it protects us from UV radiation and it can protest, protect us from other type of radiation. So the scientists uh, were uh, studying this pigment and they found out that this pigment also appears in bacteria and fungi that are exposed to high levels of radiation. For example, in Chernobyl, they found that a lot of these fungi were melanized and that's how they protected uh, from the high levels of radiation. So the scientists were all uh, for a really long time trying to figure out 
how to get melanin and how to uh, make enough of it so we could use it to our advantage. Um, the procedure before how to get melanin was just to uh, extract it from the living organisms. But one gram of melanin was very expensive if you prepare it that way. And then uh, the scientists in our division modified the Vibrio nitrogens to make melanin on demand. And now we can actually make kilograms of material and we can we can provide it to the testers. So this material can then be tested on um, uh, on, you, on uh, unmanned vehicles that go to the space or underwater or wherever it can be. Uh, it can be exposed to high radiation and we can test whether melanin could be used for these type of applications. We have also tested if melanin could be applied to uh, cloth and uniforms to protect our personnel as well. So these are some uh, direct applications of uh, synthetic biology mater produced materials and uh, biotechnology in a bigger uh, space. That's really fascinating. For students who are wanting to go into this line of work, what kind of advice would you give them? So biotechnology is one of the emerging areas currently, and it is growing, especially on the biomanufacturing side. Uh, we are looking into many different uh, mechanisms and different pathways, how to produce materials in a different ways than the traditional chemistry way. So I believe this field will grow tremendously over the next few years uh, because the workforce currently is not uh, there and we have to work on uh, getting the workforce ready and get, uh, changing our manufacturing um, lines to be able to reach it, reach our goals with just making all of our materials on the biology, by the biology instead of the traditional organic chemistries. And uh, in my role though, if you look at, uh, if you're on the biological analytical chemistry side, um, what I really like about my role is that I get to work with all of these different scientists and uh, deliver results to different projects and different uh, personnel. Because when I study the biomolecules, we, I can be studying for multiple projects at the same time, even though I'm applying the same analytical chemistry techniques. Uh, I can be looking at a bacteria or an organism that is producing melanin, or I can be looking at bacteria or fungi that is producing a small molecule uh, that will be applied for further production. So no matter what the future goal of uh, the project is, I, I am providing feedback to the scientists that are modifying these organisms. You touched on it a little bit earlier about how the uniforms that you're working on, making sure that the um, melanin can be used to help um, improve the uniforms for the warfighter. Um, what else do you see in the next 15 to 20 years that will better enable the um, the men and women in our armed forces to be able to to continue to to do this work and um, the advancements in in the bio biochemistry areas? So biotechnology is also focusing a lot on producing uh, different type, uh, producing food in a different way. So we are, uh, you know, there have been uh, uh, reports about how to make uh, meat uh, through bacteria, through biotechnology. Uh, other scientists are also focusing how to make fuels, alternative fuels, and uh, get a little more greener chemistry uh, going on uh, to avoid using all the fossil fuels and uh, protect our environment a little better. Um, and then uh, there are also efforts uh, to help with understanding uh, the microbial uh, uh, communities that, that are within uh, warfighters or within our personnel to enhance uh, their uh, performance in, uh, in their jobs as well. So for example, uh, in, we have a lot of personnel that is uh, working at night. So looking at how the microbial communities uh, 
that are associated with the, with human performance and um, working at night? How do they change? How can how could what could you do to help these this personnel to improve uh, their performance? And can you just describe something in your career that you've really enjoyed? Uh, um, um, something you've been out in the field doing that um, really has sparked your interest and made the work enjoyable? So because I do work with microbial communities and uh, microbes in general, I do find myself in the field quite a bit to collect samples uh, directly from uh, marine environments and from uh, sometimes even from directly from the U.S. Navy uh, vessels. And uh, every time I get next to a big destroyer or a submarine, it really makes me feel very humble because uh, you're just a little person next to this big mission uh, ship. And uh, you really get to uh, understand and appreciate all the work that uh, our warfighters do on, on these uh, vessels. Uh, I also really enjoy in my role as a scientist, I uh, enjoy outreach to other communities and to uh, students and uh, little little kids because <laughs> uh, every time that I bring science outside of my lab, I learn a lot from the students and parents and uh, kids because they always have slightly different view uh, on the science that we do. Uh, when you're in the lab, you tend to focus on one problem that you're trying to solve in a certain way that you know how to solve it. But once you start uh, speaking to the young young students and young scientists or even general public, uh, you get questions sometimes that you might not think about uh, that uh, angle of your science. And uh, it's very illuminating to me to uh, to get these ideas back into the lab and start thinking a little differently about our problems. I know it must be a lot of fun to see their eyes in amazement and wonder as they see the different experiments. Oh. Yeah, definitely. It's very funny because a lot of the times we get like, I didn't know science could be fun. <laughs> and Absolutely. I, you know, that's the big part that we really need to be uh, explaining to everybody. <laughs> Absolutely, that's great advice. And, Thank you again, and thank you for your time. For Naval Horizons, I'm Alex Jackson. Thank you.